I think that there are high standards now in VTubing, but not in the way that everyone keeps yapping about. Anyone can be a content creator, but becoming a VTuber is more difficult now because of how much time and money it costs to get a custom VTuber model, and that's not including all of the other stuff you have to worry about with VTubing like social media and burnout. Hi, welcome back to Mari Monday because it's uh, totally not Tuesday, yep, no, it's definitely a Mari Monday where I answer your questions while playing a game. Today, I'm going to be playing a new game that recently came out called Cookard because it reminds me of Solitaire, it's free, and I like food. Is there a right way to VTubing or content creation, and how high have standards gone up now that almost anyone is a VTuber? Well, there isn't any right way to VTube per se, but every VTuber wants to become a streamer even though we aren't in the pandemic anymore, so less people are staying home watching streamers. A lot of them have moved on with their lives, and I think that streaming should be your secondary way of making content. Not your main one, so as a VTuber, you should be making different types of content like shorts, posting artwork, memes, long form videos, making like guides or something, like just doing something, anything, and then using streaming as a way to engage and interact with your already established community. What do you use for your face tracking? Um, I use an iPhone 14 Pro Max and this isn't even my phone. Um, I'm renting it from a studio because my old iPhone XR is too old to track my face properly and I use VTube Studio to puppeteer my model. I don't have VBridger and um, I don't have voice syncing set up yet because I still haven't had time to sit down and I can actually learn that yet, but I'm hoping to soon. A bit of an off-topic question, but is Mochi doing better? Which, thank you for being the first person to like ask me about that actually. Mochi's doing a lot better now. Um, she is not eating rubber anymore. Thank you so much for asking that. I'm keeping a very close eye on her because I swear this dog just loves to eat things that just hurt herself all the freaking time and try to cause me stress and anxiety, but no. She's doing fine, so thank you so much for asking. Do you take chows? Uh, yes! Of course I take showers, like once a month, just like everyone else, Baka. Wow, what is with these questions? I swear, some of you are a little unhinged today, huh? It's because it's a Tuesday. I mean, it's Monday. It's Mari Monday. <clears throat> oh, here's an interesting one. Any tips on dealing with burnout or better yet, preventing it? Swiftstar, thank you once again for um, providing a very fascinating and most likely going to be a long topic, which by the way, thank you so much for being a member. <sighs> um, when it comes to dealing with burnout, I don't have a foolproof method on that because, um, I have ADHD, which means that it is very easy for me to get burnout. So I have gone about it in a couple of different ways. One of them is that I take a lot of breaks. I have this clock that beeps after every hour or so, so I can get up and stretch, go say hi to Mochi, maybe do an errand if I need to do it, and then come back. I used to do this thing where I would hyper-focus too hard and get angry when anyone tried to interrupt me, but I realized that I spend a lot of the time just staring at a blank screen because I was forcing myself to think, which made me start to overthink. I know, isn't it? It's, it's very interesting to think about because like trying to do this game too while talk is also like requires a lot of thinking. I'm just like trying to balance everything out. But you know, what's kind of interesting is that I get a lot of my inspiration by not sitting down looking at my Google document. When I do get my inspo, I talk into my little like voice recorder or I'll jot it down in like my mini notebook, but it's usually when I go out and do something else that I'm not just forcing myself to sit there and think. So then when I actually have the time to focus on my work, I'll have something to kind of like go on and like inspire me. It's really Really important to have so many different like bundles of motivation and inspiration. That's why like I literally curate all this and post it on my Patreon because I want to have buckets of just inspo. It's It helps a lot. I specifically get burnout if something is personally bothering me. Like for example, if I'm having a really bad day, then it's very difficult for me to want to work on content because I'm not in the right mindset. Actually, <laughs> The reason why this video is being uploaded today, for example, is because I had a very bad experience at work yesterday and it took me hours to finally calm down and by the time I fell asleep, well, you know, it was the next day and then I was like, oh no, um, I need to get off here and start recording. But yeah, after I fell asleep, I woke up and I was feeling a lot better and here we are. Now I'm recording really early in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> because I feel better now. The other thing that will make me start to burn out is being overwhelmed. And I get overwhelmed when I either absorb too much information and I don't know what to do with it because I haven't fully processed it yet. Or 
If I have a lot of things I know I need to do, but I don't know how to take the first step with accomplishing it. Like the reason why I started Mari Monday is because I have a lot of things I want to say and a lot of things that I want to talk to you about. But sometimes editing these types of videos overwhelms me and I can't take it to a video editor since the majority of them only do stream highlight reels. I doubt I could find an editor to edit my Mari Monday videos because they just wouldn't know what to do with this rambling anime girl. So I came up with Mari Monday as a way for me to be able to make content without having to stress about the very first step of editing because I know answering questions while playing a game is something that's like, yes, it's like fun, Okay, actually, this game is like very addicting, by the way, but it's something that I don't have to overthink about. It is like something that I don't need to focus on retention edits or making sure my script is like properly structured. I can just talk freely and still provide value in a more raw format. So my best tip to avoid burnout is to do whatever it is that's stressing you out in a way that will make you not overthink it. For example, if you have to write a 10 page essay that's due by the end of the week, but writing essays stresses you out, then open up a Word doc and just verbal vomit all over with your random thoughts. It's actually how I come up with a lot of my videos. <laughs> Then after that, read it and just pick out the few sentences that relate to like the essay topic and then BOOM! Just like that, you have your outline to write your paper. Rather than overthinking what you're going to say, just say the first thing that comes into your head because you can always fix it later. That's the best part about scripting or like recording, you know, like in terms of like live streaming content. Once you say it, it's kind of out there and like, uh oh, like there's no taking it back. But at least with like videos, you can have multiple drafts. Same thing with like essays, you can write multiple drafts. Like you don't have to be perfect the first time. And a lot of like the burnout comes from the stress of trying to do things perfectly the first time. That's like a random example, but I think that can apply to pretty much anything that is stressing you out since stress is typically what causes burnout. Not sure if you tried going the indie VTuber route before, but if so, what's it like being an indie VTuber versus having a manager like you do now? Can you maybe give a short list of pros and cons for both? I don't know why so many people think I'm in a company because I have a manager, but I have this assumption that many of you have never really watched content creators before because like every big YouTuber and streamer has a manager. Ludwig, XQC, Pokimane, like, like, a lot of them do. It's not like just a VTuber corpo thing. Like this is like pretty standard in the entertainment industry. <laughs> and the reason why a lot of us get managers is because sometimes it's difficult to keep track of a bunch of different projects and having someone help manage them or helping manage you your content can save you a lot of time. Personally, my manager Tessa has been helping me find video editors. She has been working so hard to find someone who is willing to work with me on scripted YouTube content because there are so many VTuber editors out there who only do highlighted edits, which is the worst type of content I could produce on this channel. Edited highlights just don't work for me and it's a waste of my money to even try to make videos like that on this channel. So I am very thankful to have Tessa spend all these hours trying to find people and she's also my go-to person to bounce my content ideas from because honestly Tessa is like one of the only people who has ever truly believed in me as a content creator not even like some of my old friends would believe in my vision as a VTuber and everyone around here always made fun of me for making YouTube content as a VTuber everyone except for Tessa she's been very very supportive trying to help me do research on my target audience and she's shown me how to like filter out the noise. And when I say this, I'm talking about people that I actually want to talk to and filtering out the people who don't actually matter. Because I'll get a lot of angry comments from people telling me how bad I am and why my content isn't good. And then there's like, all, there was also like a time where like another VTuber tried to send her following to harass me because I told them to grow up for their shitty behavior. And Tessa pointed out that a big hate crowd was just noise and they don't actually represent the people I want to talk to because the people that I'm trying to talk to actually understand the message of my content and it actually helps them. But when you're by yourself, sometimes when you see like all this negativity and people like coming after you, it can feel very overwhelming and you feel trapped, you feel alone, like no one is there to support you. And one of the biggest pros of having a manager is that they can be that voice of reason. They literally, like, the biggest pro of having a manager is that you can hire a manager for anything that you need help on. So having someone, like, explain to me, like, hey, like, I know this is, like, really stressful to, like, deal with, but this isn't really how, like, your audience thinks. This is just someone who's just trying to start stuff because, like, they just want to feel special. And kind of, like, 
compartmentalizing a lot of that stuff and like seeing like okay that's true this really does not represent like my audience so like their feedback is not important it's like having someone to ground you essentially but again just because you can hire a manager to do anything does not mean that you should make them do everything <laughs> I know some people have multiple managers that do like their own specialized thing and I had like a live stream talking about that more in my virtual life but I think that the I feel like a lot of people don't exactly understand like what a manager can do and how to utilize them properly and they think like a manager is supposed to make them big and like I, I don't know I feel like the biggest con is finding a manager that's the right fit for you because some of the best managers are hard to find because they're already working with someone and you have to comb through all the snake oil salesmen out there but the only way you can do that is by spending money and trialing them for a bit to see how they work and i think the biggest misconception people have when hiring a manager is that they think hiring a manager means that they'll suddenly start growing and if they aren't growing then it's their manager's fault and it's like oh well you scammed me and it's like no not necessarily like some people are not meant to be content creators and then other times you have to just keep trial and like trying and trying and trying to put it into context it took me and tessa several months of me doing tons of trial and error on my youtube channel to figure out what content actually works for me and then understanding why it works like i it's so frustrating to want to like talk about because i feel like people have this unrealistic expectations about their content they think that if they have a big fancy debut they're gonna grow and if they don't then it's their manager's fault because they didn't like promote them enough and it's like no maybe your model doesn't actually fit the right audience that you're trying to reach out to maybe like the actual content you're making isn't the right fit maybe you just have to slightly tweak a little bit of how you go about talking and that can be like the biggest difference maybe we need to improve your graphics or something like there's a lot of variables for why people are either engaging or not engaging with your content like it's not just this weird one-sided relationship where you hire someone they tell you do this this and that and then boom you just become successful like it, it doesn't work that way that is not how content in general works. It's not how people work. Not every piece of advice that your manager gives you is going to be the right one. And just because it's not the right advice does not mean that they're scamming you necessarily. It's up to you to pick and choose what direction you want to go with your content at the end of the day. Especially if you're an indie. If you're in a company, I mean, you guys have like your own rules. Like, I don't know anything about that. But if you're paying someone to help you and you're not taking their advice, and you're still not growing, then what are you doing? You're just wasting money at that point. Like actually try the advice first. And if you don't understand what the advice is, ask for clarification. A good manager should be able to explain it to a five-year-old. A literal five-year-old should be able to understand the advice. And if they can't, then that means the manager doesn't even understand their own advice. And so like, there you go. But if you're still not getting it, Ask questions. Stop getting frustrated at the person you're hiring being like, well, you're not helping me. So like, you're not, you're incompetent. Like, no, maybe you're the one that isn't like taking the time to ask and communicate properly. Like actually try the advice first. And if it doesn't work, then work on that from there because that's the only way you're going to improve. You can't just have this expectation that you're gonna try this one thing once. And if it doesn't work, that means you should never try it again. Or like, <sighs> It's so frustrating to talk about this kind of stuff. Like, oh God, it could also be because this game is slightly frustrating too. It's a, it's, a, it's a lot to manage for my ADHD. But if you strongly feel like the advice that they give you is not a good fit for your channel, then talk it out with your manager and see if you can find another solution. Your manager is supposed to be your coworker, your teammate, someone you can equally plan things out because they are a part of your team. So communicate and be honest with your manager if you're in this to try to make a shit ton of money tell them that say like i want to make a shit ton of money okay let's talk about some money plans let's talk about things that you're really good at that we can monetize like don't just sit there and pretend like you're here to make friends and then also try to be like well i also want to like make this into a business like no you need to be honest with your manager if you want to be funny and like you're talking to your manager and they're like, well, the jokes that you're making doesn't seem to like be uh, really getting a reaction out of people. 
then look at like how you're setting up your jokes, how you're setting up your punchlines. Like have you guys like break down, take some comedy classes or something, some improv and learn what are things that people actually laugh at? How do you set up like a good joke? You know, like I feel like people are so quick to blame somebody else except for themselves or their own incompetencies on being a good content creator. And also like one other thing, <laughs> I'm not in a company. I'm just an indie. Like the only reason why I know I need this information is because I failed so much. I failed for a very long time. But instead of blaming other people, I looked at my stuff and thought about why isn't this working? Okay, well, what is working? Oh, okay. Maybe I could like rephrase things better. Maybe I need to like actually try a little bit harder on my thumbnails. And I don't know, maybe actually try to provide value. Like, I sound frustrated because I'm trying to like give people value and I feel like I have to s repeat myself with these questions over and over again because people like don't actually listen to what it is that I'm saying. Like they they just like think it's so easy and it's not. That is the reason why I feel like a broken record sometimes trying to like do this stuff. Oh man, it is like so, so odd why people ask me like for advice and then they go off and don't do any of the advice that I give them. I'm giving this for free. So like, I don't know what you want. <laughs> I don't know, like, it's just free advice, man. I'm just an anime girl playing this game. <laughs> it's not that serious. Now, this is a question that I saw a lot of you in the comments asking me. There are so many social media platforms, any tips or suggestions on managing them and benefits for members and subscribers? When it comes to social media, there are so many different things that you can do to get noticed. It really depends on what it is you're trying to achieve because every social media platform has its own unique algorithm. Now, I know this sounds like I'm about to give a generic answer, but I really want you to think about what I just said a moment ago. It really depends on what it is that you are trying to achieve. What do you want to accomplish on social media exactly? Are you going on social media to make friends? Because you don't need to post like stuff about you. You don't really need to like try to make content and like get this huge following if your goal is friendship. If your goal is friendship, go out of your way to like talk to people, be the first person to start a conversation. But like, don't try to like disguise it as a veil of like, oh yeah, I wanna collab and play games with you when like your goal is to like be friends with them because I feel like people become content creators to get friends or some kind of like benefits or some kind of romantic relationship. And they pretend like they're here to like actually make content, like they care about growing. And then it causes like awkward like stuff to happen. If you're here to make friends, don't be a content creator. Like don't focus on content, focus on like talking to people and like, making connections that way. If your goal is to get a lot of likes on your posts, then post things that people like. I know that sounds so obvious, right? But think about it. What do you typically like on social media? Post artwork, selfies, or animal photos. Like think about why people like something. I like to like a lot of artwork that I think is really cool. If you're an artist, that's something that you can do too. If people aren't liking your stuff, don't say it's because of the algorithm and don't say it's because you're bad at art. Keep making art. Like not everything that you post is going to be a banger. If you want a lot of shares or something, post memes. That is very shareable. People like to send their friends memes. Do you want comments? Post something, I don't know, post something controversial or something and that'll make people want to give their opinions on it. That's the easy way, right? Oh gosh, it's so interesting because I think a lot of people don't actually know what it is that they want from social media and then they don't know how to use the platforms. Like, I, I don't think that there are any benefits for subscribers. Other than that, they, you know, when they follow you, they have a higher chance of seeing more of your content on your timeline, but this isn't guaranteed because of algorithms and they change and people are typically on the For You page. So new stuff is constantly being pushed out to them, which means you're always fighting for people's attention. The thing about social media is that the algorithm just means people. Like, yes, there is a robot that like shows you stuff while you're going on stuff, but the algorithm is people. People choose to interact with something or they choose to scroll past. You don't need to post on every different like social media platform. I pick and choose when I upload on different ones because I don't have a lot of time to sit there posting consistently on there and you don't need to to grow. I try to focus on the platforms where the majority of my target audiences are. And for me, that is on Twitter and YouTube. That's like a vague, but basic guide on social media that I think everyone knows. So for me personally, I use different social media platforms to achieve different results. The main goal for me is to post on social media so that way 
people will want to eventually check out my YouTube channel at some point. The idea is that I post valuable content to make someone want to click on my profile and either follow me on the social media or they'll see that I have a YouTube and want to click on that. That is the goal. That is why I post stuff on social media. Otherwise, I don't go on social media. I don't waste my time because I'm spending the rest of my time making content. Now, I do post on other social media, like on Reddit, for example. I like to post in the virtual YouTubers subreddit whenever I upload a video that's either a tutorial or something that I think other people would be interested in in watching in the VTuber scene. Like, I don't post and announce every single video I upload in there, like my Mari Monday videos, for example, because I know nobody in that subreddit cares about my Mari Mondays. I make this video for you and everyone else who is currently following me on YouTube who have questions about stuff with like VTubing, like this video is your little special treat to get to ask me stuff and it doesn't make sense for me to promote it on Reddit because when I check my analytics, nobody engages or clicks on this on Reddit when I post this stuff. So instead, for Reddit specifically, I will only promote videos that are either going to help solve another VTuber's problem that they currently have or if it's a topic that I think VTuber fans will enjoy watching. I know the virtual YouTuber subreddit has a self-promotion tag, which is what I have to use when I like post these videos. But if you're literally just going on there and only posting, hey, I'm live, come check me out. Or hey, come watch my new video. Like no one is going to click on that, baka. Like, would you click on that? Uh, seriously, like, would you click on that? If you're scrolling the VTuber subreddit, like ask yourself, would you click on that? Don't try to lie and pretend like you would be like, oh, I might be, no, you wouldn't. Which means why would anyone else do that? No, you would scroll past it. Like I know personally, I overthink things a lot on social media, but honestly, some of my best posts that I've ever made on social media were the ones where I just don't think. I turn my brain off and I just anime girl. That's it. I just do what I want. I do what I want and that does the best. If you're very cautious and you want to like really plan things out, then just go on sub like a subreddit or something and see what posts are popular. Like, I know for virtual YouTubers specifically, um, a lot of people like to post memes or funny skits that are posted directly to Reddit. Like, not you linking and self-promoting a short from YouTube or TikTok, but you actually posting it for people on Reddit to enjoy. You have to actually be a part of the community of that subreddit to really get the most out of it instead of trying to use it like a one-sided relationship because a lot of these Redditors have been there for years and they're not going to not be on Reddit anymore just because you posted a video. So if you want more attention on Reddit, then be become a part of that subreddit community and get to know the people there. Like you can definitely see a pattern of what kind of stuff people like and they would like to engage with. And you can still be your own unique self. Just stop making it all about you. That's not how social media works. Like, yes, we're micro celebrities, but you don't need to like make that so obvious. Just be a human. I mean, it doesn't, I mean, you might, you might not have like a human VTuber, but, but just, just stop making it all about you. Try to have a conversation with people. Like for Twitter, for example, I will update people when I upload a video only because the algorithm really likes showing my thumbnails on people's For You page. And how do I know this? Because I look at my analytics on Twitter and I see the impression ratio, especially if I am making a commentary video about something that might seem like I'm about to give a hot take on. Twitter loves showing people content that's either going to make them horny or upset. And since I follow the upset category more often than not, my video thumbnails get pushed out because, well, people like to go on there to get upset most of the time, unfortunately. But I don't know, like I noticed that whenever I tweet about a Mari Monday or tutorial, Twitter does not push out those videos as much as I would like it to. So I pick and choose when to promote these. I don't really like using Twitter. But as I mentioned earlier, the majority of my target audience is on there, which means I have to use it and I need to understand who it is that I'm talking to on there. Typically, a lot of people from Twitter, if they think like, you know, if I like make a like a, a thumbnail or a title and it makes someone on Twitter be like, well, I have things to say about that. They'll just go click on my video and then comment whatever it is that they're they want to comment about because like that's how Twitter is. I form my videos 
while keeping the person that I am trying to reach out to in mind. So yes, that means you, Baka. Like, I know the majority of you are on Twitter. And I know the majority of you are constantly being exposed to seeing negative stuff and it's affecting a lot of you. So I want to make my content be more positive and helpful. But if I just make like a, a video that's like, yeah, this is like really positive and motivating, people are not going to click on it. But if I actually write a tweet, that is more positive and not just like a, you can do it. Like I actually take the time to address something that I know is bothering a lot of people and saying, hey, like I hear you. That will do a lot better on Twitter than just being like, you can do it. I know sometimes like that kind of content can help people. Some people do like those posts, but that doesn't work for me. That's not the type of people that I'm trying to reach out to because I know the people that I need to talk to are more logical. They don't need someone to tell them that they can do it. They want someone to acknowledge how they're feeling and say hey i acknowledge it um i have a similar experience too and like this is kind of what helped me go through it no pressure um you don't need to do like the advice that i did this is just like an example if that makes you feel better that's the kind of mentality that i have for the people i reach out to on twitter you know even if i talk about drama i try to have a more constructive spin on it now because i think we can all have a civil discussion and learn something important from everything that happens around our community and overall i just want my content to be more like helpful than not and like i i want people to feel like they're actually being heard you know like i, I feel like a lot of people don't have an opportunity to let anyone like just acknowledge them um, it kind of boggles my mind that people are so like self-absorbed that they just they want to be noticed but they don't know how to get noticed and like there's just this weird relationship I guess it's, like more like a weird one-sided relationship on like <clears throat> what <clears throat> sorry I'm like what does good in the algorithm when the algorithm is just people and people have feelings and people have opinions and beliefs and dreams so reaching out and communicating what those are and making a connection is how you succeed on social media. For example, um, when it comes to Instagram, I just post reels on there most of the time. Basically any funny memes or skits that I either saw on TikTok or came up with myself, I'll upload on there. And that's because I know the people I am trying to reach out to go on Instagram to be entertained. Like, I like, I, I also wanna post more aesthetic art of like my model on there, but I don't know, I might wait until after I, I do my re-debut also, like, I haven't tried any of the educational stuff on there, but I know people really like funny stuff on there, and I've been successful posting things that are skit-related because, again, I know, like, the people that I am trying to reach out to specifically on Instagram want to be entertained. That is, like, what my focus is. Then, on my bio, I have my YouTube channel linked, so anyone who checks out my profile can see that. And I have gotten a lot of people subscribing uh, to my YouTube because of that, because they liked how funny I was, and they want to see more content like that. Like, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like I'm not giving the best advantage answer for all of this stuff like i feel like the things that i'm saying is not really clicking and i don't know like i feel like i feel like that social media is hard okay it is hard like sometimes you think you have a really good piece of art or a video clip and then you post it really proud but then nobody engages with it and well like that sucks but that is like the game you are fighting for other people's attention the algorithm is people it's people's attention People who are going to school, who are at work, who are on lunch break, who are in right before bed. They all have feelings. They all have something that that there's a reason why they're scrolling on social media that they need satisfied. And more often than not, nobody engages with your content because you couldn't get them to stop scrolling for whatever it is that they were currently on social media for at that time. It's very time sensitive and our brains are wired to filter out noise and things that don't interest us. And the only way you can get someone to stop scrolling is by catching their attention for the first three seconds when they see your piece of content and it satisfies like whatever it is that they're looking for currently while browsing through social media because that can change throughout the day and the time. Like, think about it. You ever wonder why Not Safe For Work art always does well on Twitter? Because when you're scrolling, you'll see like a lot of skin, even if you're scrolling fast, like that is a big blob of skin or you'll see some kind of like big booba anime girl and that'll catch your attention right away if you're, you know, interested in that kind of stuff. But for me, I quickly scroll past that because I am not interested in that. But you know what does get me to stop scrolling? 
a cat video. The moment I recognize a cat video, I stop scrolling to watch it because I want my boost of serotonin. I'm going on Twitter, scrolling around, looking for cat videos to get my serotonin. And then I log off because the moment I start seeing more depressive, negative stuff, I log off. Like, I don't want to see that. I log off. So you got to think about that. Why is someone currently scrolling through social media at that moment? Like, I want you to think about why you scroll on social media. When you're on Twitter, what kinds of posts make you stop scrolling? If it got you to stop scrolling for even a second, then that means that's that grabbed your attention. That's something you should know down since it got your attention. Maybe it was the first word of their sentence. Like, I don't know, like you read the first sentence of my experience with and automatically your brain is wired. Oh, this is going to be like some interesting tea and that makes you stop scrolling right away. Maybe it was like a caption on a Reddit post that caught your eye. Some kind of headliner, some kind of like buzzword, some kind of emotional punch. You know, it is, there is a reason why you're on social media. You are looking for something. Now think about what the people you're trying to reach out to are looking for and make content around that. Anytime something catches your eye, even for a millisecond, take note of that, write it down because there is a reason for it. What I don't want anyone to do is to feel bad that their social media posts aren't doing well because even sometimes I struggle to get engagement on my own posts. Like, we are constantly fighting for attention. And the thing is, if one person ends up liking your social media post, then that's a good thing. Congrats, you caught someone's attention. And that's a good thing. Now be proud of it. Just like I'm proud of how, how much I am able to manage this uh, very chaotic game. <laughs> All right, I'll just answer like a few more questions because I don't want this to be too, too long. But um, this one caught my eye. For new VTubers, what are best practices for promoting yourself? And like, this is so fascinating. Like, it's fascinating how many people still want to know how to like promote themselves, even though a lot of things is just history repeating itself. <sighs> I think when it comes to like promoting yourself and like best practices, I, I feel like a lot of posts that do well are things that cause some kind of like emotion or some kind of reaction out of people. But that's not always like necessarily a good thing. Like... My biggest fear, at least for Twitter, is that people think that they have to vent post or make a call out post talking about drama to promote themselves because Twitter is a very negative platform where people are either, well, people go on there to either complain or get triggered by something. And it's very easy to fall into this negative loop of making self pity posts, talking about how your content sucks and how nobody cares about you. Basically having full blown panic attacks on social media because it'll get likes and engagement. And as like a new VTuber, I could see how like joining the, like the Twitter community, for example, and seeing all of that and getting pretty overwhelmed to be like wow this is like what i have to do to like get engagement and like here's the thing i've tested it out and it does work but at what cost it's super easy to complain about how you can't afford expensive models or how you feel bad about your content or oversharing a deep rooted insecurity that you have because more often than not someone's gonna go out of their way to cheer you up and like that's not a healthy mindset to have about social media there are better ways to vent out your frustrations like i personally I, I journal a lot and i avoid vent posting on social media because i don't want to make people worry about me like look i'm not perfect nor do i have the best situation over here you can take my advice with a grain of salt like for all i care like the only thing that i care about is trying to at least help you out like at least i'm putting that effort rather than saying yeah it's like pointless for you and like you should just give up and blah 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 like i'm actually trying to work things out which is probably more more than like what anyone else will ever do for you. Because if you find someone out there who is very kind to you, then cherish those people. Like actually like cherish those people because like things like Twitter and stuff and social media are so like negative. And um, I want to use VTubing and my content as like a creative outlet to make a more positive impact rather than to make strangers feel sorry for me because I already... I don't know, like, I have a lot of shame about things that I struggle with and people telling me that they feel bad for me makes me feel worse. So I don't like making content about my struggles personally, which is kind of weird because sometimes I do open up about stuff, but it's very difficult for me to. Because I know personally when I go on social media, I don't go on there to see my Oshi crying and like being sad. Like I go on there to escape from whatever it is that's bothering me currently and to distract myself because uh, maybe I'm already sad, you know? And because I know this, because I know people are coming on social media to distract themselves, I think about like whatever it is that they might be dealing with and how I could make them feel better. I think the best 
practice is to just make good content that the people you're trying to reach out to actually care about because it's a double-edged sword to open up about your problem. And I think that there's a time and place to be vulnerable with your audiences about stuff that, you know, that you're going through. But depending on how you put it out there, it could potentially hurt you more in the long run. I know it feels very good to get all those negative emotions out right then and there and you feel better. But think about like the splash damage it causes to other people when you're letting that negative emotions out especially if you're oversharing very private details that would be better to share with like a close friend or a therapist with <clears throat> so when it comes to like social media try to remember that if you want to be an entertainer you need to focus on that kind of content if you're just again trying to make friends then you don't need to be a content creator you just need to just talk to people and just socialize they're two very different things hopefully that could kind of like help out a little bit that is like a very difficult question to answer so i'll make this one the last one um this is from okay now thank you so much by the way for being a youtube member thank you um how does one use reddit as a vtuber what do you post to get actual positive feedback and attention? Reddit scares me, so I never post on there. Especially after my simple question got downvoted on the virtual subreddit. Uh, virtual YouTuber subreddit. So, like I said earlier, trying something once and having, like, a negative experience can make it very scary to want to do it again. But that doesn't mean that you failed. Like, and even if you did fail, that's not a bad thing. Like, I don't know. I, I feel bad to admit this, but, um... I've had to unfollow a lot of people on Twitter because some of them would just post really, really, really sad stuff that would just trigger me. And to protect my own mental health, I've had to unfollow and mute them. Like if you go to my Twitter likes, you'll notice I like a lot of cat videos. And I do that because I want to fill out my timeline with more cats. Since seeing animal videos like that, you know, photos and memes, it makes me feel less anxious. And I just mute content that I don't want to see. So my Twitter feed has been a lot better lately. Now, I know that your question is about Reddit, but the same logic can be applied to on there. I don't know what the simple question was that you had asked on Reddit, but I do know that if you make a post that looks like criticism being super negative, or if it's really off topic from that subreddit, then people will downvote it. Like whatever it is that you had asked must have been like perceived as something like not very um, either entertaining, engaging, positive. Like it, it's a little bit different than the whole like toxic positivity mindset too. Like this is a very different thing. There is definitely whatever the topic was must have made people very angry. That's like the only thing that I could think about why someone would downvote your stuff like they, they didn't like it like people are very picky with curating their social media feeds and they won't hesitate to block you if whatever you posted made them feel some sort of negative emotion and sometimes you don't even do anything sometimes you literally could post like something super positive and people will still block you and have an issue with it like it's really important to pay attention to the vibes around the communities that you're trying to interact with on social media. Like I said earlier, people on the virtual YouTuber subreddit like memes. And when you make actual content for them on Reddit, not many, like, there's not going to be that many people that care about you going live, nor do a lot of them want to participate in pointless discussions. Like, I saw someone the other day ask why everyone hates filling on there, and it got, like, a downvote and a few comments on it. The question seems innocent enough, but if I had to guess, it's most likely because people on this particular subreddit don't want to entertain a discussion like that, and maybe that question belongs in a different subreddit or on a different social media platform altogether. I think, like, as a V2, YouTuber, you are just, no, no, not even just a VTuber, just in general. Observe how people use the social media platforms that you want to participate on and see what actually gets like engagement and then ask yourself why. And usually it's because people either learn something from it, it inspired them, it made you feel good while looking at it, it made you laugh, it made you feel like something, or it made you want to comment and share your own thoughts on it. It really depends on how you view engagement. A lot of people want to be complimented. Like a lot of people want to be told that they're important and that like they're special. And that's not the reality of how social media works. A lot of the times people go on there to make themselves feel good and to make themselves feel better. That's why they comment negative things on your stuff because it makes them feel better. Just like if you were to go and vent, it makes you feel better. Like it, it's kind of like you gotta understand people. That's really what this is about. If you want people to compliment you, if you want people to say you're a good person, you are the best, you deserve this and that and that, then there is like a certain way you have to make content that will get that kind of a response. And it doesn't have to be a negative vent post. If you want people to share your stuff, 
it needs to be funny and relatable for them to say, hey, I want to send this to my friend. I want to send this to my mom, my dad, my dog. Like, I want to show them this thing. Like, I don't know. I, I, gosh, this is like such a long segment. And there's like, there's so much that I could go on about with social media, but maybe that's better for its own dedicated video. If that's something that you're interested in, because if it is, just let me know in the comments down below. Cause I, I think like, I'm like getting frustrated at this game. It's getting a little overwhelming. Like answering these questions are a little overwhelming and just like, sometimes I just feel like people don't listen to what it is that I'm saying. So I am just gonna say, take my advice with a grain of salt. It's not the end of the world if like what I say does or doesn't help you. It's advice, at least I gave it. It's better than just telling you to F off and go figure it out yourself. Like, at least I tried, <laughs> at least I tried. So I, I hope that could be helpful for you. Which, uh, oh, well, look at the time. That's all I have for today. And honestly, I'm done playing that game. That game was really addictive, but man, that was getting really overwhelming and stressful. <sighs> so if you would like to submit a question for next week's video, then leave a comment down below. And also real quick, we are less than 100 subscribers away to 100K. Like, thank you all so much for supporting me. Make sure you hit the subscribe button for more Mari Yume content. Like, thank you so, so much. Like, I, I hope Mari Mondays are helping. Like, I really hope they are. Like, that is the goal is to let people ask questions. And I try to like give advice from my perspective and my personal experiences. So I really hope this is helping you. That's all I can ask. So thanks so much for watching. And remember, everything reminds you of something.